Oi, budge. 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 What can we do to help people who are stuck in these jobs, who are destined for greater things? People stay in jobs for much longer than you might reasonably expect them to do. Businesses need to communicate better with their frontline staff. It's the exact yeah. opposite mm. of what we're conditioned to do is blunder into the unknown. There's yeah. a fear of being alone. We're incredibly optimistic generally. We always look and see there's a glimmer of hope because that's what drives us forward. Welcome to Budge, How to Fudge, Be Human, the podcast that helps you through behavioral science, psychology, and nudge theory to figure out the best way of faking being a human. Uh, <laughs> why, do, why do people stay in their jobs? We're actually smashed at the moment by um, the great resignation of people leaving their jobs. But the reality is, is over 50% of us have been in the same job for more than three years. And we constantly hear about the gig economy and people, you know, jump from job to job. But the, the, one of the major things that all the research will tell us is that millennials actually want to stay in the same job and they want just as much security as us generation Xs and baby boomers. So why is it that people actually stay in their jobs despite the fact that all the great resignation, yes, there's lots more people resigning, but there's this massive glut of people that will stay with their employer. So we're gonna talk about that today. Before we do, uh, make sure you check us out on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and give us a like, a share, and subscribe. We're on all of the finest platforms in the world. As always, I'm joined today by Dr. Darren Coppin. Uh, of course, behavioral scientist, speaker, writer, lover, and the original fifth Teletubby, Gingy, <laughs> Gingy Wingy. And uh, welcome, Darren. <laughs> Hello, Paul Miles, Managing Director of The Busy Group, one of Australia's largest education, training and employment organisations. And talking of jobs, your first job was actually chimney sweep, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. It was. It's my, that's why I love Mary Poppins. That's so why you much. wear black most of the time. <laughs> yes, yes, to hide the, the soot. James Weirt, um, uh, who of course, you're here today, mate, because you have a, a very long, significant background uh, in senior executive roles in the employment services sector. Um, uh, with Mission Providence, I think. Yeah, through the Indus Group, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course you were the sixth Teletubby, uh, Barbara. <laughs> well, thank you for having me, Paul yeah. and Darren, and uh, honoured to be here. Long time listener, first time guest. Thanks for being here, mate. We, we really appreciate it. Did you think it's a fallacy then that uh, people uh, are quitting their jobs? We hear about the Great Resignation. It's also been a major movement in the US. It's been a major movement in the UK. We are at 3.5% unemployment in Australia. Do you actually believe in the great resignation? No, but I mean, that first sentence is, you know, that people talk about the great resignation and, and we talk about, and, and there are hundreds of videos and web pages on why people resign, but not a lot on why people don't resign. And actually jobs are much stickier than people think. People stay in jobs for much longer than you might reasonably expect them to do. Yeah, and this is what all the research is telling us. That's what I was saying, that we, we, people are staying in their jobs, you know, 50, over 50% 50 have sustained for more than three years. Uh, and, you know, I, I went through all the stats, you know, um, despite what it says, uh, one fifth of, of non-retired adults left their jobs by choice in 2021. 41% of the global workforce is leaving in the next year. 48% of Australians are planning to look for a new job in the next 12 months. And, and you know that gets higher the younger you are and the older you get uh, you know 77 percent of, of over 55 has no plans on moving on despite all these stats right um we are consistently um seeing that the the, the great resignation particularly in australia is it necessarily the, the, the movement we expect it to be and, and even all around the world people actually do stay in their jobs a, a lot longer than, than the media would tell us and, and people are really actually in this time of change and and, and, and sort of uh, you know, COVID craziness and chaos, people actually are looking for stickiness and they actually want security. So, so the major thing around that security piece is that people are actually leaving jobs in things like hospitality and even the medical field where they've just been, you know, they either have the uncertainty through hospitality, for example, but also just the stress of something like uh, health services. So they're actually choosing to leave jobs to seek more security. But the broader message is, is that the great resignation is, is, yes, it's this happiness part, but it's also this part around security. So, yeah. so, and your researcher too, Darren, is saying that pe the jobs are far stickier 
than we expect them to yeah and it's a base again, i always bring everything back to 99 percent of human history and base human drivers and biases and what have you we have a status quo bias where we like to stay where we are and wear waist jackets and jeans uh, we have a loss aversion um, bias. Uh, we're, we're, we, we, we think there's a scarcity of everything. That's why we overeat when we can yeah. uh, and, and, and what have you. So, and, and I like my old wives' tales or old sayings. And it, it is really the grass is always greener on one side versus better the devil you know. Um, so people don't really jump unless it's really safe to do so. Um, otherwise, they deem it too risky. Now, James, you've worked for a, a really large organisation, and and but then you went and started your own business. I mean, what, why did you? So I've got to jump in here. Did you? <laughs> did you? You quit on Darren, weren't you? Worked for Darren briefly. After, <laughs> I consulted after, for you, Darren you, you for a brief period. You worked for very large group yeah. of organisations, and then Darren <laughs> Darren gave you your first chance, and you threw it in his face. Was my understanding? Absolutely. <laughs> Last did the morning. I think I lasted the morning. And I'm stores, still in mourning. I've such a different size to this story. <laughs> Shut up, um, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, yes, Daz, I, I did. You're right. I, I, um, I did. I, I was with the Indius Group, as you mentioned, Paul, at the top uh, for just nearly 15 years and decided, you know, the time, the time was up to kind of try my own thing. I felt I was becoming a one-company guy. I definitely stuck with them for a good good long period and um and 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 broke away set up a consulting firm for myself and um and and that's grown into various things specifically supporting the the employment industry and i might just give a quick reflection on what you guys have just been talking about in relation to the employment industry in a moment but but look yes i did i quit and it was a big deal and i've, I've learned quite a lot of lessons in terms of jumping out of employment i think it's one of those things where you know the beginning of covid there was that great resignation, as you're talking about, Paul. I think that's almost come full circle. And people are sort of thinking about, can I stick with this place? It's kind of mm. caught up. There's, there's some good working from home benefits. People are really thinking about me and how to best support me now, potentially. But um, look, for, for, for me, I, I learned quite a bit from quitting that job and uh, from starting my own business. I think that's, that's, you know, a big, that's a big thing. So 15 years with a company and you've mm. gone, you know what, I'm going to go it alone. And, yeah. and this literally comes to the core of what we're talking about. There'll be so many people watching this today going, I want to quit my job, I want to quit my job, but I want security. I, 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 it's too much of a risk, I've got kids, I've got mortgages, uh, all these other things. What was the actual, what was that, what went through your thought processes that made you go, you know what, I'm going to quit this really secure big <laughs> job and take that huge risk to go alone? And what's yeah. interesting for me is you still speak about the business that you were with for a long time with a, a great deal of affection absolutely yeah I, I learned so much with them I, I started as an employment consultant for them in 2004 and then went on a, a leadership journey with the group and learned so much went through so many evolutions of the business with them as well I will say for anybody that's thinking of um, quitting their job and thinking of going it alone and doing their own thing I, I, I think probably for me um, the biggest lesson was around uh, I guess how rich you feel, if I can sum it up um, as succinctly as possible. One, your, 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 the revenue you get and, and how you get your revenue com changes completely. You know, you have to look at different, um, different ways in which to be able to, um, to, to generate your revenue through the work that you do, how you position yourself, what you can leverage in your own asset pool, etc. cetera. Um, but also I expected to be really time rich leaving an organization and I ended up not being very time rich if anything time poorer but I would suggest probably flexibility richer if that makes sense so you kind of end up doing more hours when you go at a yeah, yeah, leave imagine. a company I can imagine but it's when, worked out well for you though I mean you've just moved into that new box uh, <laughs> under, underneath the bridge in service paradise I believe, so. Unbelievable. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a nice box down on sea <laughs> it's got four sides can I just bring it back, though, full circle to your point? <laughs> Surely a box Rather should have six you. sides for <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. That's, that's getting planning permission, Dad. Planning I, permission. I, you know, I'm not a How do you get in and out? <laughs> anyway, sorry, bring it full circle, Jim. I'll try, I'll try and salvage. Um, yeah, look, I think um, what's re been really fascinating is that, you know, there's been a big retender from, for the main federal government contract for employment services. And just inevitably, you see lots of movement around that kind of time. And, and, and I think we've seen that happen again. And I think probably the, the added little uh, sprinkle for this, this last round has been that the, the, it's really been an applicant led market. Like there's been huge competition for the, um, you know, the, the entry level employment consultant roles out there. 
And, and I think that's been a really fascinating dynamic for the providers to get their head around. What is their employer offer? How are they attracting the right talent? How are they retaining the right talent? Um, and, and I suppose one thing I'm really interested in as we explore what you're going to go through, guys, is just, you know, having, having managed lots of businesses and, and managed, you know, hundreds of people. And, you know, one of the, the interesting things is obviously trying to um, retain the right talent. You know, um, looking at the people who need to progress and go through the business, looking at the people who are perhaps struggling in their role at the opposite end of that as well, and just trying to make sure that, you know, you're giving them the right support. But if you give them all the support, you know, how do you exit them appropriately from your business? Um, and, and just making sure that people don't, you get the dynamics right. There's so many things to be considering when you look at a business from a macro level around this stuff, you know, um, promote too many people up, and then the tree gets too heavy and it falls over and there's nobody over to, to support people below. Um, and, and just, you know, how, how you kind of look at those dynamics. Are the right people staying? Are so so you're, you're obviously staying? talking about all this in the context of the employment services sector yeah. in Australia, but of course the same could be applied to, to most industries around the world where you have massive change in, in the way that we deliver services. But also it's in the, both the context of the employment services sector in Australia, but more broadly in the context of skills and shortages and you talk about the fact that employers struggle to retain um, the right people for the long time. Mr. Coppin has come up with seven um, uh, reasons why people stay in a relationship which you think can actually be then put towards why people stay in a job. Yeah there's there's an enormous parallel so what we're seeing is people do tend to stay in their jobs longer than they perhaps should uh, so contrary to this great resignation moniker and, and, and perception out there. Um, and when we looked into it, the parallels with staying in abusive relationships, this isn't saying directly that working for some employers or managers are abusive, but this, this episode is about why people don't quit their jobs. And the seven key reasons people stay in those relationships are fear of not being able to find another role that would value them. Yeah, okay. So, sorry, so... The relationship, so what people people don't want to leave their personal relationships because they their fear of being on their own or fear of finding somebody better. Yeah, it's feeling, yeah, and somebody that that cares for them, even if yeah. that person is fairly abusive, they still sort of care for them. There's still relationship. You become addicted to 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 yeah. that attention of that person. Yeah. And in the employment world, in the skills world, is is I suppose you, you fear that you quit your job, you can't find something new, and. Um, it's worse. And it's unknown. It's the yeah. exact opposite mm. of what we're conditioned to do as a, as, a, as a human is blunder into the unknown. Mm. And for most of human history, the people that have pushed boundaries or, or moved us out of Africa have been young people that don't have a, a fully functioning prefrontal cortex to keep saying, oh, well, hang on a minute, this might not be a good idea. Yeah. Um, they're more risk takers and they're the people that have probably pushed the, the, the human uh, species forward. Then the second reason is fear of being judged and ridiculed if you chuck mm. your job in. And you clearly don't have issues with that. <laughs> Do you think that, that I've had so much I've gone I've risen above it or, or sunk below it I think but yes <laughs> do I think Jim Bob no I was just going to ask that do you think that's being judged or ridiculed by the the people they're resigning from or the people they're going to what, what's the you know a new employer well or? generally they don't actually that's massive because you know when you start a new job it, everything's so new and confusing and scary mm. and the longer you've been in your previous job uh, the, the more that difference is, is, is perceived so, yeah. but it's on both sides you know you, when you're throwing your job in it feels like you've been rubbish and, and you're a failure to some extent mm. um, unless there's this thing that you touched on and that's hang on a minute sometimes it seems like the best people are the ones that leave the jobs more readily and that there seems to be a reason for that, that the turnover of staff are actually the good staff sometimes. Yeah. So you've got the good staff and then the totally dissatisfied staff um, that are leaving. Um, I, I mean, have you come across that? Do you know why good staff tend to be the ones that leave more, more frequently and readily? Look, I, I think um, the... It, it's tricky because I guess they get competitive, you know, so you've got to get your, your uh, progress, how you develop people right. You know, you've got to really look at that. And um, it doesn't have to be necessarily promotions, but, but, you know, just what you're doing to develop and keep your staff engaged. Because I guess the more dynamic the staff that you have, of course, in the short term, the more successful you be and the more they'll generate for you in terms of uh, productivity. But I guess over time, 
those people, by the very dint of the fact that they're more dynamic, um, are probably quite competitive, probably quite ambitious, and probably want to progress. Yeah. So how do you look after that? And if you and don't, then they will more. I yeah, guess. exactly. Yeah. You know, and 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 I think um, I'm sorry to circle back to the first point as well, but I do think it's a really interesting one around this idea of um, you know that that kind of building credit over time you know you kind of you i know we sort of moved away from the gold watch analogy of the old days no one really has a 50-year career with one employer now but there is something there around you feel that you're building credit you get you're building a relationship with your boss your leader your your you know hitting your kpis in whatever industry that might be and and over time amassing some credit for yourself you know and then it's just what point are you chopping that off? Uh, I see you know? what you mean. Yeah, that reciprocated loyalty and, yeah. and, and value and embedding yourself. And once you're embedded, it's harder to extract yourself as well. It is. <laughs> and, and I guess if you're in an, in, in an industry where there are multiple people doing the same thing as you do, then of course that is another opportunity for people to jump ship and, mm. and shuffle around and create that, that problem for employers because, you know, they can lift those KPIs and take them out with them. To come back to that employment services industry again, you've got this universally understood metrics of the star ratings. So if people feel they've got an attachment to that performance, they can lift it out and say, I was five star mm. here, there or anywhere. But those KPIs could be applied to lots of different industries. And I think that that is an issue, you know, yeah. you've got to create a dynamic of like getting the right people to stick and keeping them motivated and engaged in the business. Yeah. You know? Before we uh, jump onto number three, uh, I should just mention, we have a sponsor, Populi Solutions, uh, the fabulous, gorgeous people of Populi Solutions, Populi, P-O-P-U-L-I, I think it's Greek or Latin for people, um, Populi.com.au. Of the people. Of the people, yeah. thank you. <laughs> One Australian company that helps in the employment services sector, so if you're a long-term unemployed people, ask person, if you live in Australia, ask your employment services provider to get in touch with Populi to put together programs, and uh, if an employment services provider, get in touch with Populi to put together programs that will help long-term unemployed people. Our inaugural sponsor, thank you Populi.com.au. Make number three comes back to kind of what we were talking about, the, the third reason why relationships in life are kind of relate like relationships with the employer. Yeah, the is abusive relationships so yeah what was, what was number three what's <laughs> number three uh fear of losing everything security and safety yeah so again it's that status quo bias and and, and it's safer the better the devil you know that we, we, we've always lived by as a maxim and i wish through the others it's the fear of not knowing and unknowing uh, and the unknown um and what to do with your life and uh, handling challenges that are going to come your way these this isn't talking about work this is abusive relationships in in a, in yeah, a house what you're trying generally. to do is you're trying to draw the similarity as to why the, the, the behavioral science and the psychology behind it is, is such that we apply remarkably that similar remarkably similar and there are lessons to be learned for how do people extract themselves from from those sort of abusive relationships um, and, and, and i know we i know we joke a lot but there's probably a very serious podcast to be had on these issues around helping people leave difficult relationships. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, and and leaving work if it's appropriate. There's yeah. a fear of being alone. Yeah. You know, when when you leave, you will be alone and you'll be sticking out a bit when you move to a new organization if you have one to go to. But you also get used to the pain mm-hmm. and used to the abuse um, at work or, or, or in a relationship. Yeah. And finally um, we're incredibly optimistic, generally, uh, as, as, as people. So we, we, we always hope things are going to change. They're, we always look and see if there's a glimmer of hope because that's what drives us forward. That was the best thing about uh, the pandemic and how we coped with it when we were in lockdowns is there was constant a news drip of, oh, there might be a vaccine being developed. Uh, oh, it might be evolving the virus into something that's less yeah, that less deadly, yeah. um, and that's that's That'll what keeps well. yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it did work out well. <laughs> no, it did. It did. But uh, um, it did for Australia. <laughs> yeah. And amazingly, though, the thing, the catalyst for people actually quitting, um, according to Glassdoor and and Sloan uh, Man- Massachusetts Institute of Technology, is is one toxic culture. Which, of course, that's what we've seen in the Great Resignation in America. This hospitality where em- employees are going, you know what? I'm not working about eight dollars an hour for somebody that says I have to be. You know, we have Australia is uh, one of the, the biggest casualisation workforces in the world, along with you know, I, I think Switzerland, the Netherlands, uh, Denmark, and the US, where employees are going. You know what? I'm not willing to work in this toxic culture where they think they can call me up to come in on Thanksgiving, and um, 
and, and, and that's enough. And then the second one is there's job insecurity. Yep. So they think they're either about to be personally fired anyway, or there have been signals from executives that there's going to be redundancies in future. Yep. And that's mm. brilliant for firms. It's a great tactic because you say, oh, we're thinking we're going to have to have some rationalization in the next few months. And people go, bugger, I'm off now. Yep. But for the management, <laughs> they don't have to pay redundancy packages. And the other downside is often it's the best staff, something you touched on before, Jim, that leave first. Uh, they get the job uh, more readily. Yeah, and I guess someone that runs a company that, you know, we've got a thousand people these days, that, that sucks, that stuff. I, I, I think that's disgusting behaviour. That, 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 but it's the reality is there's businesses that still do that. Yeah, I saw you noting it down furiously yeah, when no, I said no, that no, could no. happen. Yeah, that's a good yes. idea. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> disgusting. Um, and then finally, and this is really surprising, why do people leave? Um, it tends to be from companies with high levels of innovation. Um, and that's because you join a company and it's, and it's great, particularly if you're a, a single in your private life and you work all hours and, and you're being entrepreneurial and innovative, and, but it's only so long you can s sustain those levels of energy uh, before it impacts the rest of your life. So you see in Silicon Valley and uh, uh, elsewhere that high levels of innovation, there's actually high staff turnover. Tesla experience it, even though people love it and it looks great on their resume um, that they've worked for Tesla. Um, it's, it's just hard to sustain. Do you I'm think it's, we're coming towards the end of okay. our podcast? I'm going to put a quite the same question to both of you then. Darren, you to start and, and Mr. Weir to maybe go as well. But the question is then, if, if these seven things exist, which make it so hard to leave an employer, and when we do leave an employer, it's about toxic culture, insecurity, the, 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 the change because of innovation. What can we do to help people who are stuck in these jobs who are destined for greater things, there's something better out there for them. What can we do to inspire them, encourage them and help them to leave that employer? Well, we, we, we don't want to encourage um, too much transience and an, a, attrition, but the, the one, and again, the, the learning point comes from relationships, is quite often people don't leave uh, an abusive relationship until they've met somebody that's actually kind and values them and they have someone else to go to. There's an overlap. And it's very similar for, for people is just have a little look out there, have the odd interview with someone else and don't feel like where you are is the be all and end all and that's your entire world, yeah. is have something else to go to before you make the jump. I, I kind of agree with you there, Daz. I, I want to like give one like real macro umbrella statement here. I think businesses need to communicate better with their frontline staff. Um, a, a, across the board and that's both to retain the right talent and then also empower people when they choose to move on you know and I think that that comes down to just better educating people and why you do what you do what are some of the decisions that you're making and why you're making them so uh, what one point that has been sort of circulating for me as you guys have been talking is just that um, you know when you do retain people and you get that loyalty it's kind of one of the biggest problems with change management because people came in at a certain point when things were done a certain way. And then when you have to move things perhaps into it, you grow, you, things need to be more centralized, whatever it might be, that can be really jarring for people that are very loyal to the way things were done, yep. you know? And if you can like just spend your time just taking a moment from um, the executive teams through management teams and into frontline staff and just to explain to people why you're doing things, for those people that are interested to use that as an opportunity to help develop people as well and grow them, um, uh, you know, that, that can be as simple as what development is, just showing them behind the curtain a bit on how the business is run safely, appropriately, showing them what, what, what you can. And um, I think that helps people both with change management points, retaining the right people, but let's be honest, when it comes to people leaving the business, where we saw this huge uh, swathe of um, you know, people jumping ship and moving around the employment services sector in the last few months, where, where the, the, the salary of that um, entry level role has been pushed up due to that behavior. You know, I think people have possibly jumped ship into different um, jobs without necessarily being fully armed with all the tools. You know, yeah. they've been attracted by the salary, but they haven't necessarily been empowered enough or been aware enough to be able to ask the questions they need to ask around. Yes, but what does this really mean structurally? What's your service design? What are you really doing? You know, so um, I think that's a really, really important point that's wrapped around this as well, mm -hmm. honestly. So, yeah. Jess, um, thank you as always, Dr. Darren Coffin. <laughs> <laughs> thank you as always, Dr. Darren Coffin, your, your behavioural scientist, uh, 
<laughs> Genius. Uh, nice to have met you, Paul. Yes. <laughs> Can I just say, Paul, before we wrap up, because I think it's an important moment it's of good closure. To I, I, well, I do love you both. Big, big fan. Um, but you know, <laughs> I did do uh, an extended consulting gig for for Darren, and I did end up leaving him and quitting that. And and it was like high five. <laughs> it was leaving not an abusive relationship, a lovely relationship, but I just. I want you to know I still love you. Yes, oh, I thanks. I knew it was a tactile relationship. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> look, I, I suppose my, I'm just going to add this one thing. If you are stuck in a toxic job, you know, you, you could be there for the next 20, 30 years because people do fear losing their jobs. Or you could get out there training, you know, take a pay cut, go and do a. It is hard. I'm not, I'm not lost on the fact how hard this stuff is. But you can actually go and retrain, do something amazing for four or five years and have a fabulous career in life. So, you know, take your time to think about it and, and look at these reasons why you are stuck with that employer. Look at these seven reasons that Dr. Darren Coppin has talked about today and think about how you can challenge those. And, and the long term is far, far better for you for that short term pain. Um, thanks to Darren, thanks to, to Jim for joining us today. If you've liked what we've been talking about, there's lots more Budge podcasts, How to Fudge Being Human on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple. Please like, subscribe, comment, because we'd love to hear from you. Uh, and please share away and tell everyone how fabulous Budge is. Thanks, everybody.